Hello folks and welcome back to GBS Engineering. So an elderly gentleman accidentally lost control of his vehicle and crashed through the adjacent or joining wall to my old shed. My old shed was a bit of a lean-to with canvas fronts and one large single door and it needed a bit of a revamp anyway but the insurance company decided that they wanted to take the old shed down put everything in storage and give us an opportunity to build a new shed uh yeah <laughs> so herein begins the story and i'm looking forward to showing you all of the hard work that has gone into building this fantastic new facility that we have now here we go let's have a quick look around the old shed shed v1 it was more of a lean-to shelter than it was a shed loads of solar panels on the top and then when you get around to opening the door you'll then see how busy it got in there so much stuff so much junk a micro inverter giving us 240 volts back into the house certainly helps with the electricity bill but there's so much stuff in here it's absolutely unbelievable and what we have to do now is start working on pulling everything apart getting everything out of the old shed so i've made some pretty good progress on getting down all of the shells that were up there obviously i'm sort of leaving the solar panels and it's, it's micro inverter in place till the last minute we want the solar panels and this to create as much energy and save us as much money as possible what we need to do is buy boxes for storing all of the tools and all of the junk that I seem to have collected over time. All of this pretty much now needs to go into storage and then they can start demolishing the shed. Uh, all of the essential stuff I have kept in my log shed, let me show you. My winter log store um, at the moment has become a storage facility for all of my essentials from the shed. I know that looks like a lot of essentials. It's a bit like when you take your other half on holiday and you say, yeah, just bring what you need. Um, yeah, there it all is. <laughs> Let's get everything out of the shed then. Motorbikes and stuff and more stuff. And let's get the solar panels off the roof, get everything put away so the storage guys can come and put everything in storage. And it was actually quite hard work. As you can well imagine, there was a little bit of heavy lifting involved and a lot of boxing up. The good news, of course, is the insurance company very kindly gave me a little bit of money to take care of all of my efforts. And then the storage people came and they put everything in storage. Obviously, I didn't have to pay for that either. And there we have it, an empty shed. And then came demolition day and the boys showed up and they started taking my paper thin shed apart and I realized why I had a saggy roof and all the rest of it it wasn't very well put together my old shed it was done on a budget and we've got a lovely little patch of land now so we can start working on putting together a new shed ah fence posts extracting fence posts with a lever and rope let me show you I was scratching my head for a few minutes trying to figure out how to get these fence posts out that the insurance company had cut off just a few inches above the top surface of the ground. Eventually, I found a way and I used a lever. Now, when I say I've got wood, trust me, I've got wood and lots of it. <laughs> There's a chamfer on this edge here. On the bottom here, there's a little chamfer as well. Uh, uh, if you turn it over, this back is completely straight and this is completely straight. So depending on which way around you have the wood, you end up with wood that's chamfered on the front or not chamfered on the front. And it sort of changes the look of the, the panel boards. The other thing, obviously, you don't want to put them in this way up because there's a big old V-groove here. And if it rains, the water will just sit in the V-groove and it'll probably rot through the boards quicker. So you want to make sure that they're this way up so that the spiky bit allows the water to run off the outside of them. As you're doing this job, you suddenly realize uh, how much more thought you have to put into it. Great news, I have some uh, cheap Asian labor um, so uh, I'm just sitting here uh, relaxing nicely uh, and the wife is uh, panel boarding everything up for me. She's brilliant. I just wanted to make sure that the top of the roof was level and straight. So this is like a gimbaled laser level. It's quite cool. During the day, you, you can't see it at all. It's useless in the sunshine. Maybe you can just see it down there on that, uh, on that post. 
and that's what we'll do to use to make sure that the roof stays completely level but the laser level is up and running and I'll tell you what it is telling me that everything is straight and level this is fantastic news I'm actually quite stoked about this laser level So having put some new 4x4 fence posts in the ground, it was time to start putting some structure into the roof. Clearly you need to continue to keep your eye on levels, and obviously the laser wasn't working in the sunshine, so I used the spirit level. What I ended up doing was connecting two 3 meter long fence posts together with a fence post connector, and then positioning them on top of the support struts. You can do this job on your own, but it's always nice to have someone to help you and criticize your work <laughs> anyway uh, again laser level still not working so bit of string clearly we needed to check and make sure that nothing moved and everything was solid and yes it was fatty was able to get up there i also put down some concrete to make sure these tongue and groove boards sat in place properly and weren't exposed to residual damp there was a grin of satisfaction starting to appear on my face as I continued to panel board things up. And then thought, ah, time to start looking at the tools required in order to do this job. You're gonna need some long screws, some short screws. <laughs> You're gonna need lots of screwdrivers, electric, obviously. Lots of power tools, electric. You, you, ah, ah, tape measure, tape measure. That was, the, that was the thing that was probably the most important piece of this puzzle but yeah you can see there's a lot of wood showing up and there's a lot of wood chopping going on and a lot of thinking going on it's really quite good fun though the panel boarding was probably the most satisfying part of the whole project just watching the walls appear as time went on I'm about four days into the build now and this shed wasn't built from specific plans that I'd found on the internet. I was just sort of making it up as I went along. You really have to sort of sit down, have a long, hard think about things. I've never built a project like this before in my life, not quite as big as this. So yeah, this was um, really quite an interesting undertaking. But eventually I got the roof on it and the satisfaction, the smile on my face at that point was fantastic. However, I knew bad weather was coming in, so I worked extra hard in order to try and get the roof in place quickly. The roofing boards obviously need to be screwed down from the top, and kneeling down on top of the actual shed roof without any knee protection was a killer, so get your knee pads out. The other thing that wasn't easy to do, especially on such a hot day, was felting. No, not felching, felting. And <laughs> trust me, this was a hard job. My problem is going to be getting down. Here's a great way to test your roof. Got a thunderstorm rolling in. <laughs> it's like 30 degrees outside and the, a freak thunderstorm just came in. Um, but wow, we've really made some really good progress I'm aching absolutely aching from head to toe uh, I sort of had an inkling that this weather was coming and I worked really hard to get all the felting down and I'm really glad I did there you go <laughs> this is the view from outside the shed ah well the good news is I now know what I need to do to fix some of the guttering here because clearly there's a lot of water that we need to direct away. Probably the best shed in the world. <laughs> this is the frame, if you like, of the door. I was going to go with the same sort of 
single door. Uh, but actually, I've decided that a double door, Dumbledore, probably makes more sense. And also, um, that works with the amount of wood that we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop that door frame down the middle and make two doors that open. Ta-da! <laughs> Something like that. And some sort of power, power tool, charging equipment. <laughs> And don't forget to test fit. Yeah, they look pretty good actually. I put up a shelter to shade me from the sun. It was getting quite warm out there. But first door went up, lickety split, happy, happy days. Managed to get the second one on and then realized there's quite a lot more work to do, uh, including fitting all of the hardware and also double skinning the inside of the shed putting loads more panelling up on the inside of the shed to effectively create a double skin. Finally, we got to that point where it was almost all sorted. I was absolutely aching from head to foot. I haven't done this much manual labour in, well, uh, all of my life, I think. I'm normally used to tapping a keyboard and sort of like using a soldering iron. The interesting thing is, is sometimes you get some wood that's delivered to you and you turn it over and you find there's nasty bits and bent bits and stuff like that. They're normally okay if you, if you want to return it. Most of the time you can get away with using what you've got by perhaps turning it round the other way or cutting it into shorter pieces. Anyway, there we go. Doors sorted, shed almost done, shelving, boxes, wife. Let's get the wife to test out the shelving we're putting up. Make sure that it's nice and strong, not that she's particularly heavy. And also, let's get that lovely stable horse door bar thing in place. That was originally going to be a window, but I'm glad I came up with what I did. Finally, get to have a look inside the shed. We can see all of that lovely, 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 lovely shedness just coming out. And honestly, at this point, I was ecstatic, happy that we were almost complete. Guttering day. So it's all really easy. It just all clips into place and screws into place. So this is the fun bit. We get to test it. Let's... Uh, Pour, pour water in here and wait. Oops. And there we go. Uh, hello, folks. Yes, it's it's shed version two. It's almost there. There's more shelving to go up and stuff like that. So we had a delivery today of all of the stuff that was in the old shed. And I've got to be honest with you, you just collect so much crap. It's time to have a clean out. I know, I, I, I hate throwing things away because you always sort of go, oh, but that, that might be useful. I, I've got so much crap. I mean, so much crap. But right, come on, let's, let's sort this out. Look at all of this madness in front of the shed here. Pipes cable uh, another a wheelchair the old bike uh, loads of stuff taking up garden space ladders paint more ladders it's just like oh come on but we really are getting there now it's all really starting to take shape and look absolutely magnificent here it is then folks the shed in all its glory let me take you inside the shed Oh my goodness, look at this amazing organization. We've got some lovely little signs up. This one was here very kindly given to me by Ian Matthews. I found these. <laughs> this was the old dubious engineering workbench and I had loads of people sign it and I just thought ah, it'd be nice to have that in the shed. So uh, it's in the shed with nail plate on it. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite drinks as a younger drinker. The other thing that I've done is I've installed some lighting systems. So uh, there we go. We've got some decent lighting in here now. Uh, we've got lighting inside the shed and outside the shed and switches 
to activate the appropriate lighting. We've also got here an old Bluetooth system, which is wired into many speakers in the corner of the room. And uh, down underneath here, you may just be able to see a couple of a 12 volt lead acid, sealed lead acid batteries that came out of a friend's mobility scooter. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we have now got a good bit of organization going on in here. It's just amazing how quickly you manage to fill all of this lot up. The roofing beams and joists and all the rest of it are going to be absolutely solid. So when we put the solar panels back on here, it's going to be fantastic. The other thing I bought, a new lawnmower. What I love about this one, it's a cylinder mower as opposed to a rotary mower. And it's powered by a, a nine hell battery. And uh, I tell you, that thing is an absolute beast. I'll probably be doing a review of that at some point in the not too distant. And as you can guess, I'm really happy the way this shed has turned out. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering on YouTube. We'll see you in the next video. Don't forget, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you again. Have a wonderful week and weekend. Cheers and beers for now, folks.